Hi, uh, good afternoon everyone. My name is Amara Ali, I'm a uh, Council Ali, and I'll be chairing today's meeting. Um, we have an update, and I would like the legal advisor to update you. Hi everyone. Um, so we've um, had a meeting, um, we've had an offer in um, from um, Councillor Ali King in relation to um, this decision to say um, that she's proposing to defer um, implementing, well, prefer, proposing to defer the decision until after the election um, to be considered by the future Public Health and Communities Policy Committee. Um, and if the Corbyn Committee vote to take no action um, in this evening's session, um, she and the Director of Management in place um, agree not to act on the decision um, as delegated in March Covenant meeting. Um, and so on that basis, we will defer the decision um, until that committee um, to be retaken at that point. Could you explain that a bit more clearly? Yes, apologies, that was very legalese. My apologies. Um, it, yes, would you like to help me tonight? Yeah, I have got the cold and hot, so I'm a little bit um, struggling with this. Apologies. Um, um, thank you, Chair. Um, I think really at this stage it would be really useful to have some context because we've got members of the public here, they're coming completely cold and not, are not aware of any email that we've received as a panel. I, I don't know whether it's possible for the, that email to be circulated so that members of the public can have a, a read of the proposal, but I think that, that we're really speaking here a little bit out of context because that it, we're not framing exactly what the proposal is. I don't know whether it's appropriate at this stage to read out the letter and then obviously circulate it 
to the members of the public, so it's publicly available if that's possible. Could I ask that? that also, <coughs> that's a fair reason. Could I ask that that also be circulated to us as well? As <laughs> so you haven't seen it either? Okay, so I beg your pardon, I'm sorry I thought you had. I, I apologise for that. So we really need this, this whole thing framing and putting in context and it would be really useful by the chair if that could be done. Yes, it could be done, yeah. Um, so can you, I think you just need to invite Councillor King to maybe can speak he, to us. Yeah. Uh, hello, good afternoon everyone. Um, yeah, apologies for the short notice first of all, uh, panel. Um, but uh, at around four o'clock today I sent an email um, to the call-in panel um, inviting um, them to consider an alternative to the to the three suggestions that have been proposed so far. So far. Um, I can read out the email. Well, I don't know how we would circulate it to who and how we would do that appropriately, but... Keep reading the first How about I read out what I was going to read anyway, yeah. which includes yes. a reference to that. So my approach to um, allotments has had two key principles which I hope we can all agree on. Halting the decline of the allotment service, delivering service improvements, and secondly, protecting a struggling park service and continuing to invest in them so that all of Bristol's residents can continue to enjoy the benefits. If we can agree on these principles, then we must also agree that a rent rise is necessary. 2018 was the last year that rents were increased. A small blanket fee of five pounds was applied to every tenant an acknowledgement of the impact of austerity. In 2020 with COVID and a national surge of interest in allotments. I don't believe this was the right time to increase rents when we had a global crisis in which people's personal lives, their ability to work, socialise and their mental health was impacted in an unprecedented way. Then the cost of living crisis hit and once again it felt like the wrong time to consider an uplift. Alongside this our council has been increasingly financially battered and bruised a cost of operating crisis as described by our mayor. Sorry, Councillor Abbey, is it okay if you just talk about the letter, the email? Yeah. I want to provide the context to it, so this is my full answer. Yeah. Alongside this, our council has been increasingly financially battered and bruised, a cost of operating crisis as described by our mayor, with one in five councils facing possible one, section 114 notices in the coming years. Combined with that is the sharp decrease in resident satisfaction with their allotments and with their parks. The increase on the most common plot size, plan B, with just under 50% of tenants on this size plot, is 75 pence a week. Doing nothing is not an option. I want us to have good quality public services that we can be proud of. I believe in the decision taken in this paper, and that was evidence-led, and it was undertaken in good faith. But this unlocks our ability to improve the service and the satisfaction and pride of our food growing residents significantly. Brighton's allotments were in the news this week with allotmenteers asking is the allotment service broken, citing a lack of inspections, overgrown and unused plots, poor site rep morale, fences and gates not maintained and emails not being answered. Over the years I've heard similar dissatisfaction from Bristol's allotmenteers, so this has been a difficult decision but I do believe it's the right one made in the right way. I'm disappointed that it's been called in which feels particularly cynical considering we had two community scrutiny sessions with no alternative solutions proposed by councillors. Shortly before the calling meeting, I wrote to the committee to propose that we defer the decision to the first meeting of the Public Health and Communities Committee after the election. This is an opportunity to embrace the collaborative potential of the committee system and to enable cross-party members to take ownership of the policy. I would particularly look forward to proposals by members of the calling group and would welcome the opportunity to work together on this. Thank you. Um, um, we, we offer the opportunity to get the details of what was in the letter. Because right at the last minute we've had a concession and a pullback, which is welcome, which should have happened a long time ago. And we, we've got this quite a lot of expense and people were to trouble, which should have been completely unnecessary. I didn't want to hear a justification yeah. for what had happened. I know suppose a lot of the people here wanted to hear a justification either. It's the factual situation that effectively the decision has been withdrawn on an odd basis we can proceed. Sorry. Can I just further, I think 
with a panel, so <coughs> this is a very unusual start and it must be very unprecedented and confusing for people to be here today. So I think the first thing we do is we owe the public and the call-in people a, a full explanation. Um, I think what was agreed in the, in, the, in the room before we came in here is what I just quite like to explain to everybody. So, you know, we came here ready to hear the, uh, the call in at five o'clock, but an offer was made by Councillor King, and essentially the offer is that um, the option for us today is to decide to do nothing with this proposal today. That's on certain caveats. One is that the cabinet paper is, is, is withdrawn, and that it goes forward to the um, post-election new policy committee in May, or the, the first one that it has, where the proposal would be re-looked at. And we did, with the legal officer, come up with some particular wording that we wanted to share with everybody. And the idea was that at the beginning of the meeting today, we would do this now at, at an early stage, because obviously people have come here with statements and que with questions, but we didn't really feel that we wanted to put you through the charade of, of making your statements and asking your questions if we'd already decided that we were going to put it forward. And that is what the panel have decided to do today. We've accepted this offer from Councillor King and it will go to the policy committee. With a, with a couple of caveats, I don't know whether the lawyer wants to particularly say those things. What we wanted to do is we wanted to ensure that the, um, the tenancy um, inflationary costs charges was disaggregated, separated from the rules and regulations and we would make a recommendation that it was looked at under those processes. So let me know if you can't hear or understand. My apologies, as I say, I've had a cough and a cold. Um, so the, um, what the um, subcommittee would like to do in this forum now is um, to resolve to take no further action provided um, that the officer and the relevant member give an undertaking not to um, implement the cabinet decision um, and that the relevant policy committee will, after the elections, um, retake this decision, um, considering whether any further information is required um, and taking into account the issues raised in the Corbyn. Um, and they'd like to recommend to that committee that they break the decision down into looking at the rents first and then at a further point um, looking at the regulations that affect allotments. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've got a, I'm a little bit confused. <laughs> Apologies. On the so I'm just going to ask. And with respect, I am talking. I'm oh, sorry, I'm a bit confused because I'm about to ask my question. Yeah, go on then. Who's not part of that? Councillor Fox is not part of the Corner Subcommittee. Would, would it help, Chair, if we were to display the letter on the screen? Yes, yes. yes. With, the, with the greatest with respect, I'm really sorry. I have a question. Who's not on the panel? There's different conversations going on here. I'm a bit confused. And I have a question. Sorry? We're the Everybody on this Can I can I just No no but I am I just I have a question. You explain as the chair what you explain as the chair is your duty to manage this meeting and exactly explain who can speak and who can't. Because if, if the appellant can't speak, you need to let them know, and you, if they can, you need to give them an opportunity. But they, they are confused, these guys are confused, there's a lot of confusion around here, and it's, it's not actually productive, so you need to get a hold of this meeting and start chairing it. I think, Councillor Ali, what we agreed was that we, the, the whole point about this is we sort of lost sight of the chronology of what we expected to do when we came in here. The chronology we expected was that rather than go through the whole public forum um, element of it, we wanted to, under Chair's business, make public the decision that we have come to. We were obviously going to have to vote on this in, a public, in the public meeting at some stage, but the chronology was we would make the announcement so that people knew the context. We would then, Chair, we, we agreed, we would then offer the public the opportunity to ask their questions and make their statements if they felt it was still relevant. And then at that point, and only at that point, would it come back to us for a decision. 
I think it also probably would be fitting to offer the, the, the people on the call-in panel an opportunity to ask questions or whatever. Um, so it's, a, it's up to you now that you decide you want to have to speak to the public first, which is, the, which is on the agenda, or to speak to the panel. I have got a technical question for our lawyer, solicitor. Pardon? Amy, I was talking and you started talking with respect and then I did not even get a chance to ask my question. Uh, sorry, can I ask you for one minute? Hold on, let me just clear your Take the public forum first. Yes, um, in the context that we've had the discussion so far, uh, all the questions and all the statements have been read by members. Yeah. Uh, if members don't wish to present their statements, but that's fine in the usual way, I would then suggest that we allow uh, Councillor Fodor and the councillors who have called in the committee to speak and present their case. They may wish to just to say their case. If there will be any questions. If members had any of that, then Councillor King, although she's always speaking, she's given an opportunity to, to present her case. <coughs> Questions from members of the committee of Councillor King, and then there's a debate, and the decision is taken. Okay, and obviously, there hasn't been a formal vote at this stage. So, members may wish to work with the procedure in a, in a rather more quick way than we may have done it if it had been a full hearing, but I would suggest we stick to the procedure and work through that in that way.
Yes, we're just waiting for Pip. We're expecting the chair to read out the list. Can we have Tom, please? Tom? Tom? No, Tom. No, Tom. Uh, Lauren? Is Lauren Lynn from here, please? So this calling was about the, the, the process. 
Um, so that paper was symptomatic of the fact that we have been drip fed information over the last three months. The information has been incomplete, full of contradictory facts and figures, and hard to interpret. We've had to ask dozens of questions to, um, to cabinet, to scrutiny, to board council, as well as put in loads of information requests, simply in order to understand why the new rents were set as they were. And after all that, there's still no clear and transparent explanation for why the rents were made as they were the increasing. So the consultation decision making process has not provided this presumption in favour of openness because of the total inadequacy of the provision of potential information. So, you know, I just hope that when it comes to the new committee that it goes to, that there's clear information <coughs> presented so that sensible decisions can be made.
The consultation form was only designed for individuals to respond, so for example, groups could not answer the questions on protected characteristics, and so the consultation data could also have shortcomings. Um, the council continued with their original proposals for rent calculations and water charges without any discussion of alternatives. We don't think that meaningful consideration was given to the consultation responses. The 31% respondents who did highlight a negative impact on protective characteristics seem to have been ignored, and the decision looks like a foregone conclusion. More information should have been supplied with the consultation. Certainly before the decision, and some important information was only published after the decision. In terms of equality aims from the FOI request and information held in community groups, it's clear that the Council does not yet have a good grasp of the range of community groups, their membership and reach, nor the roles they play in building diverse and inclusive communities. Yes. So um, we welcome the decision to. Um, to revisit this um, following the election. Thank you. Can I remind everyone, please, stick to one minute. Uh, Tim, please. Oh, sorry, uh, Neil. Yeah, yeah. Tim? Tim. Oh. Tim. No, 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 No. Mel? Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Right. Well, I fully endorse all the evidence for death presented um, from other states today, which you've already read before, I know. But don't wish to add to them, because what I wanted to say was I want to make a heartfelt plea to all the councillors here today who are fully committed to fair and open dealings to refer this matter back to a full council meeting, which of course that's not an option now, I guess. Um, where a properly reasoned and collaborative process can be followed to support, protect, and defend our allotments for future generations. For this, any councillor here will be thanked and remembered by the thousands, the many thousands of us in over 100 allotment sites, community gardens and orchards spread throughout every part of the city and of course all our networks of family and friends. This is the first time in three years that Corbyn has questioned the decision, and now the Mayor is losing his power to overturn all decisions and his cabinet is dissolving, let us hope scrutiny will continue to question all other decisions that affect so many that have been made by so few. And that catalogue of errors that started in that um, uh, so-called consultation started with John, anyone from Tennis James saying, asking us allotment holders how often we play tennis on our allotments and if we ever did. And it went on and on from there. It was an absolute disgrace, shameful and embarrassing.
That was a question. Right, hold, hold on. We'll just, can we pause? Pause. Right, um, I think at this point in the meeting, we've got two options. Um, I, I appreciate members of the public that this is quite perplexing, that's an excellent word, um, as to which turn it's taken, but I think it, it's probably hopefully clear now that the option is to defer the decision um, to the policy committee. Um, that's under consideration by the, the quorum committee now. Um, we could either, the quorum committee could decide to take this decision now, which of the three options they would like to go for. Um, the alternative is to follow all the steps of the quorum committee procedure and then at that point decide which of the three options they would like to go for. Um, I think the quorum committee, that's a decision for you to make. If you could make that decision now, that would be great. Um, and we've heard, which is fantastic, um, contributions from members of the public who've come. Chair, may I ask a question? Um, we've just heard that there is some concern that the that it's not defined enough in terms of um, this new consideration. I hope that makes sense. Um, and I think I would like to suggest, since we are all together, that we open that up to a discussion rather than going down the route that we were going to go down because we have people here on both sides. We have the call-in group and we also have residents who have taken time and I would actually like to hear what those, you know, the, the, that detail is. I can hazard a guess but I would like to hear it from the people who have obviously given this more thought. I'm really sorry, call panel, that's that's. I think, Chair, that would be a departure from the procedure that you recommend. Chair, I just ask that we go through, you've made some very clear suggestions, and I think that we need to go through those incrementally to then come to a, a course of action, a decision, and then whatever that decision pathway is, when we have it, whether that generates a, a further discussion about how we move forward with that. Um, I don't know whether that's a, a proposal that we can work with. So taking all the options before us, either then going with that one or rejecting it, moving on and doing it that way. I don't, I don't know how else we're going to move on. And I'm not in favour of us having an open and free discussion because I think if you ask 10 people their opinion, you're going to get 20 different answers. And I think that's not going to give us the, necessarily the clarity that we need at this stage. Thank you. We will vote for it, yeah. Um, I think it would be worth, um, Sinead, just once again going over what we, what we actually recommended. So there's, there's some clarity and that that is properly, um, the, so, so you need to be really able to explain to everybody here what the recommendation is and then I think we could take a vote on it. So there are elements of it, and I think those elements that we've got written into that do answer some of your questions, because, I mean, you know, what we're saying is that it's a new regime after, um, uh, after May, where we will not have a cabinet decision anymore, we have a policy committee. It will be a good test for our policy committees, because what they're going to do is they're going to, they're, they're going to come up with policy. So what we're recommending is that they separate out the two elements of this cabinet paper, because we think that that's where some of the confusion was, was um, originated, and that the policy committee reviewed the rent increases and then separately then reviewed the rules and regulations. And I suppose in an element, you know, it's, it's an element of trust in the fact that these new committees will thoroughly so, investigate. So Chair, can I just suggest that one member of Sinead reads very carefully the proposed decision and then there's no votes on that decision. So it's absolute clarity what's now been decided and then we can close the meeting.
Chair, can I, can I ask a point of order, please? Are we allowed to ask a question for clarity? Sorry, you say no, I can't ask a point of order, I can't raise a point of order. If you just said I can't do that. You're not a member of the subcommittee? So, so yeah. yeah. Chair, we called this committee. You, you're here because we called this in. We're being excluded from commenting on the things we tried to call in, which are three points from the constitution of this council. And with respect to people who have taken the time to come here and provide vast amounts of evidence and insight, we, you know, we've now been excluded from commenting. <laughs> the situation has obviously changed. As the meeting said, we've had the offer of the King, we had an indication that there was a decision they wish to take. Um, we've heard from members of the public. I would suggest the most effective way of concluding this meeting now, I would suggest would be if Sinead uh, reads aloud the proposed decision, so we're all very clear what members have been proposed to decide upon. The decision has been taken, and we then close the meeting. I, th I still have a point of order. I think we, we did agree earlier that all public statements submitted to this meeting can also have to be forwarded to the new quality committee. Yeah. Yes. So that uh, members happy with that, we can do that. So can I suggest Sinead now reads the decision aloud? Can I just make one? I, 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 I still have a point of order that I would like to make, please. But Chair, Councillor Tazen is not actually a member of this subcommittee. Um, I just think a point for Sinead that one of the things that you might want to put into the proposal is that we, we also said that the policy committee would have sight of the public forum for this, but also the call-in papers. So they'll have a very good overview of exactly where they got to, and they can pick it up and then work with it from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, whilst I would agree that obviously one of the mess on this, given the mixing up of the conditions with the road prices, that's caused a lot of problems. It's not for us to tell the committee that we'll be suffering in the, in the, after the elections what they will how they should consider things. They will make the decisions based upon what they think is right, and they should have listened to, and I'm sure they will listen to, all the points of view before they come to their decision. Um, so, call and subcommittee, there are three options open to you um, as a result of this meeting to decide. Um, the first is that you can resolve to take no further action. The second is that you can refer the matter back to Cabinet with issues to be detailed in a minute for Cabinet to consider. The third is that you can refer the matter to full council for a wider debate. Um, with the first option, we have the, you could include conditions um, saying that you will take no further action provided the council um, and, sorry, provided Council King and the director give an undertaking not to implement the Cabinet decision um, and that the relevant policy committee will take this decision, considering whether any further information is required and taking into account the issues raised um, in the call-in um, and the questions raised in the public forum. Um, you'd also like to recommend that that committee, um, apologies, I'm using my own writing, um, makes a decision first on the rents to be levied and then considers separately, at a later stage, um, a decision on the regulations. Shall we move to the vote? Um, who's in favour of um, the first option? The first option. Who's in favour of the So I propose the third option, which is the one you just read out, um, Ms. Sinead Willis. So I propose it. Yeah, I call for vote. <laughs> Sorry, I just think that the way that we dealt with those three options is a bit confusing. Yeah. I, I just don't know that that's apology exactly. I mean, I think the proposal is that we, we, we saw that there were three options uh, coming to this committee, but we've had an offer of a fourth option, yes. which we have accepted. Yes. And the fourth option is that we um, 
you know, as, as we're not going to read Oceanated's thing again, but that we, we, um, we refer the decision-making powers to the policy committee post, um, post the May election. So that's the fourth option. So, so I would propose, so, so allowing for all of the, I mean, I think you'll get a written up, you'll write up exactly what you've said. So those words are exactly what we're agreeing to with the, with the caveats that are there. And we are now, I am now going to propose that we go for the fourth option, which was made at um, a, late, a late proposal this afternoon from Councillor King. And I would propose that we accept that proposal. Um, just that's my thought. Apologies. There are three options. The fourth option I gave is actually the first option, just provided an undertaking is given. Apologies for that lack of clarity there. Okay. Shall we? Shall I Yes. 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 On option one with the. Yeah. Yeah. We are. Yeah. Okay. Don't like the sound of that. Going. I'm going for. We're supposed to trust, are we? Yeah. I vote for all. Four. 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 for myself. It goes through. Thank you. And that concludes the meeting. Yes. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know it was going to be this bad.